Welcome to Haxby Shed. I'm going to give my old shaper a bit of a service. I bought it about 18 months ago and it hadn't been used for a long time. The ways had become quite tarnished and it was quite stiff to move the table. But I've used it quite a lot recently and everything now moves quite freely. The jobs I've been doing didn't need to be that accurate really. I did a couple of things recently though where it caused me to question, well, just how accurate is this shaper? It probably needs some adjustment. When I got it, I did some measurements on the table and it seemed to fall forward by about four thou or 0.1 of a millimeter. So I'm going to do some initial accuracy checks as a baseline, and then I'm going to take the ram off, clean it out, check the oil ways, give it a bit of a service, readjust the gibs, and uh, see what we can get it to. If I have an inaccuracy, it could be because the table itself is sloping forwards, or it could be that the ram, as it extends, is dipping down at the front. So the first thing I'm going to do is to check the ram. And I'm using my precision engineer's level, which I've got on top of the ram here, which I'll show you. And uh, I'm setting up the level and then moving the ram forward to see what's happening with that. When I've got the ram operating level, that will give me my reference to measure the table. And then we'll see what adjustment that needs. But first, I need to create that baseline that I mentioned. What's it like now before I do any adjustments? You can see how I've set up the level. It's supported over this distance. And just to make sure it's not dipping forward here where it's not supported, I've put on this metal block weight. This shaper stands on four squares of rubber, one pad under each corner, and that helps it settle on the slightly uneven floor, and it cuts down some of the vibration when it's working. But for this test, I've put a piece of metal plate under the front edge of the shaper stand and that's to make sure that as I move the ram forward and the weight shifts uh, the whole machine doesn't tip down towards the front as the rubber at the front gets squashed a bit. And as I push on the table my level position isn't changing. I'm having to hold the camera by hand but I hope that you can see that bubble is over to the right hand side. Now the ram is moved as far back as possible. And now I'm going to move it forward and we can see the change in the bubble. And the bubble is going to move to the left. When the ram is in the mid position, the bubble tracks to the left seven divisions. So that's seven times 0.2 of a thou over 10 inches. And I'll now move the ram all the way to the right. You can see that the bubble has moved all the way to the left and it's kind of off the scale at the left hand side so I can't measure the droop. Now I want to put a dial gauge in that tool post and then we can see what's happening with the table relative to the ram. As I move the ram forward we get the impression that the table is drooping forward by five thou. Four thou. Four thou. But we already know that the ram is drooping by maybe three thou. So maybe the table is drooping by seven. I think we need to get the ram off now get everything adjusted, get that as good as we can, and then try and figure out what's going on with the table. Now there's a gib strip at the back here, which um, affects how the table droops, so it may be that just needs to be adjusted up. Anyway, we'll start with the ram. Just a thought actually, once the ram is off, I can put the level onto the ways that the ram runs on, and then we should be able to measure any relative slope 
on the table against those because they should be absolutely level to each other. This is what I mean, putting the level on here, on these surfaces. In case you're wondering, I have put a locking screw into the clapper box here. So this is all locked and solid. Taking the ram off is really quite simple. Firstly, I just take this nut off, which then releases the driving lever, and then take out these four screws so I can remove this strip here and the ram just lifts off. If I move the ram to about the centre of its stroke so that the operating lever is vertical, I just undo this nut and as I do, the link mechanism will just drop down inside by an, uh, enough to get the ram off. This must have been made in that transition period where Whitworth screws had AF heads instead of Whitworth heads. This is half inch AF. When I bought my level, I thought it would have limited use, but already I'm into a job that I couldn't really imagine how I could do any other way than using that level. Now, I've only just realised I need to take three screws out of this wiper at the front here before this strip comes off. I added these wipers to try and keep the oil in a bit. You know, the enemy of videoing is noise. And if it isn't somebody cutting the grass, it's a bird making a lot of noise out there. I think a shaper is one of the simplest machines ever. I'll show you inside. The drivetrain has four speeds. So in there, there's two gears that are changed by this knob to my right hand side here. And then there's two speeds on the pulley. Now I only use one of the speeds on the pulley because I've got a variable frequency drive. And I've set my variable frequency drive so that it has an upper and lower limit, which is the same as the two speeds on the pulley. So I can use the table, which is over here on the side of the machine, just as it shows. And then the crank lever here is operated by an adjustable pin, an adjustable pivot on this big gear called the bull wheel. And then there's a swivel on the top of the crank lever and this clamps onto the ram. And that's all there is to it. I've settled a level on the ramways and you can see where the bubble is. Now, if I understand science at all, I think if I put that on the table, I should get the same reading if they're in the same plane, or let's say on the same slope. Well, by that comparison, the table is definitely drooping down at the front. Now, the table could be out of adjustment due to wear on these ways, or on these ways here, but most likely it just needs adjustment. There's a gib strip in there with adjusting nuts at the back here. And then there's also a strip here that goes against this dovetail. There's screws there and adjusters here, just like there was on the ram. So the first thing to do is to try to adjust those. I've put a scissor jack under the table. It's from a car, might have been a Ford years ago. Could have been a Cortina, can't remember really. Anyway, it's very useful. So if you now look at the level as I tighten that jack, if you can see where the bubble is, and I'll tighten this, and you can see the bubble moving. Look, it's racing off towards the left now. So that gives me some hope that we can adjust this out. My first step is going to be to make the adjustment at the back of this table. <clears throat> and there's three set screws with locking nuts. And I'm going to move the table all the way to the left. It travels much further to the left. But I'm going to have to be careful 
not to run off the end of the screw thread here. It doesn't cause any problems in terms of damage, but once the table's come off the end of this thread here, it's really quite difficult to get back on. So I want to avoid that if I can. I'll adjust to the middle screw and the left screw when it's on this side, and then the screw on this side when it's over here. The nut is about there, so it can run, the table can run across until the nut is about there without coming off the thread. That's as far as I need to go, I can get at those two now. The locking nuts I had were quite chewed up, so I've replaced them. And they're quarter width width screws with quarter width width nuts. So not AF nuts, but width width nuts. And now the one at this side. Well, even jacking the table up at the front, I really couldn't get very much more on those at all. So now we need to move on to the vertical slide. You may not be able to see this on camera, but look there, watch that edge. And as I tighten the jack up, you can see a bit of a gap appearing. It's only fractional, but it's there. So I'll leave that jacked at the front and then adjust that strip. Whip with threads with half AF heads again which is how the machine was supplied. Just loosen these screws off on this. It's a little bit difficult because as you loosen this, obviously it moves away this way. So you've got to adjust these and then reclamp this and see if it's done the job really. I've made all the adjustments that I can to the table slides without being so tight that it won't operate. So let's check it. And we'll remind ourselves where this bubble is. So it's off to the left, but it's not off the scale. I've put the level back on the table and I've put one thou of packing under this left hand end. That plastic bag just happens to be a thou thick. And you can see we're on the scale but we're not as far left with the bubble as we were when we were on the ramways. So it needs a bit more than a thou. In other words, it's drooping a bit more than a thou relative to the ramways. Now I've doubled up this piece of plastic to give me two thou of packing. And you can see that the bubble is just about in the same place as it was on the ramways. So the best I'm going to get is two thou of inaccuracy towards the front of this table. Now I'll clean up the ways ready for the ram to go back on. I've already checked that the oil ways are clear. So these ball bearing oilers here, they're all free flowing with nothing blocking them. Not the lightest thing in the world. This has had a bit of corrosion on it at some point, but it's all right. I've got that set as tight as I reasonably can now. And I think that's the best I'm gonna get. So now we'll do our dial gauge test again and see where we've ended up after those adjustments. I wasn't too optimistic when I set out to do this. I didn't think I'd see much improvement, but look at this. I think you can see about one thou of deviation 
where actually the table that gives the appearance of being higher at this end. But it's a combination of the table slightly falling forward and the ram slightly falling forward. Half a thou, less. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this Elliott 10M Shaper maintenance and service. Thank you for watching. Hags be shared.